Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today it's here. It is my fall Z palette. So this is something I started a year ago actually and it's been kind of an interesting journey to see how much more use I've been getting out of my individual eyeshadows because sometimes you don't want to go through the hassle of flipping through a whole bunch of Z palettes. So if you guys didn't see the previous four because there's now four. There's been a fall, winter, spring, and summer one now by this point. This will be the year two of this. This is kind of crazy. Um, I figured I'd share it with you guys. So everything I use in this will be mentioned down below. I will try and link everything. Some of these shadows might not be available anymore, so I will do my best. This is my Tarte Z palette. This is the Leopard Magnetic one. It fits 25 standard sized eyeshadow pans in it. And let's take a look at what we have here. This is the Fall Z palette. So as we go through these shades, I will have swatches linked right up here. And as we go, I will throughout the entire video be linking the previous Z palette videos in case you guys didn't see those. And obviously if you see a color in here that you are dying to see a tutorial featuring, please tell me down below. I love hearing what you guys are interested in seeing. I've kind of got a few videos in the works at the moment, so, and I'm gearing up for Halloween. I'm going to try and do some Halloween makeup tutorials. I make no guarantees on how good they're going to be though, guys. So let's get into this, shall we? So we start off in the first row with this shade right here from Colored Rain. This is the shade Champagne Life. It's a really pretty light champagne color. It's, it, there's really no better way of doing it. It's not overly pigmented. It only has a subtle hint of color into it, which makes it really nice as a topper, especially over some of these matte shadows. It'll work really well that way. The next shade in the line is Sand Dollar from Makeup Geek. It is a very pale, very pale, gray, cool toned eyeshadow. I decided I didn't want a white this time around. I usually do some kind of a nude or a white and I decide I wanted gray. But I didn't want to go with a darker gray similar to this down here, and this is the lightest gray I had, so I figured I'd get some use out of him and try using that for once. The third shadow in the top row is by NYX, and it is the shade Butterscotch. I believe this was featured in one of my previous Z palettes. I'm not 100% sure at this point because there's been over 100 shadows now that I've used for this series, but this is just a really nice mustardy yellow, screams fall. It reminds me a lot of the yellow in the Subculture palette by ABH. And the next one in there, someone just knock on my door? The fourth shade in here is by ColourPop, and this is the shade Rosé All Day. I do know that this was... So as I was saying, this shade is Rosé All Day by ColourPop. It's a very nice greenishy yellow. I didn't want to include another yellow shimmer shade. It's the, I feel like that's my go-to when I pick a colorful shimmer. It's always going to be yellow and that's because yellow and blue eyes do tend to make them pop better. So I decided instead I wanted to bring something with a little more green into it. So this palette does have a little more of a green red vibe. But yeah, so that was my reasoning behind a green as opposed to a yellow. I don't actually have outside of butterscotch. I don't have a yellow in this entire palette. It's mostly orange and brown. So trying to branch out guys. I'm trying to branch out. The next shade, final shade in the first row, is by Makeup Geek, and it's the shade Fairy Tale. I wanted a lighter purple to incorporate with some of the darker pinks and purples I've got thrown out later in the palette, so that's the decision for including Fairy Tale. We start off the second row with Bedrock by Makeup Geek, which is a medium toned, not too cool toned gray. I think it's gonna really complement some of these other shades in here that are more on the neutral to cool side. So that's why I'm deciding to experiment more with gray because I feel like nobody really uses gray as much, you know? The next one in here is by Makeup Geek. This is the shade Early Bird. This was part of Makeup Geek's fall launch two years ago now, I think. I think it was fall 2016 when those launched. A few of these in here are from that. I will link up here for you guys if you weren't part of my channel at that point. I will link up here my swatch video about those for you guys because a lot of those are staples in my collection. Like if they're not in this, they're usually in my go-to nine shadows. So keep that in mind. The third shade in here is by ColourPop and this is the shade Cannonball. Now Cannonball was in my spring palette as well. I wanted to bring it back, something that's a vibrant orange that's gonna be perfect for fall. And 
I really love getting to wear some vibrant shades like orange. I feel like since I'm not someone who can pull off wearing orange on a day-to-day -day basis like orange clothing, it's kind of nice to be able to incorporate it into my makeup and give me something a little bit different to work with. The next shade in here is by Makeup Geek, and this is the shade Ritzy. This is a duochrome. It flashes between kind of a green and a pinkish brown color, and I think it's just a stunning earth tone shade to be using in the fall time. I wanted a different glitter that was green, but not green like this one. So I went this one with that hint of pink brown in the base. You can definitely tell from the swatch above. The last shade in the row is by ColourPop, and this is the shade Labyrinth. Labyrinth is kind of a salmony pink kind of color. And I just thought it would complement really well with some of these pinky magenta shades down below. Kind of similar to Fairy Tale, but on the pink spectrum instead. And as you guys remember from, I think it was my Spring Z palette, I'm trying to use pink more often. It's not really a favorite color of mine in any way. So trying to incorporate sp sporadic that's not the word, trying to sporadically incorporate pink in my Z palette series is helping me get more used to using pink. I think I did a tutorial last fall, maybe, was it already last fall, where I did like this huge neon eye look and it was crazy. I'll link that up there if you guys didn't see it or it'll be linked down below. I don't know, one or the other. Moving on to the third row, we start off with Makeup Geek Brownie Points. Now, I always thought this is the funniest name because it doesn't look brown, does it? In the pan, it looks gray, but it does swatch kind of that cooler toned brown. And I guess a lot of people, when they think brownie, they don't really think of this kind of shade. They think more like this here, I guess, would be more of an accurate brownie shade, but I actually really love this shade. I feel like it's not utilized enough in my collection, so I decided to bring it out for this series. Next, we move on to NYX Wild Orchid. This is just a very vibrant, bright magenta. No other way to describe this, and I love how this looks buffed in the crease. It's perfect for that. Next, we have one of the foiled eyeshadows from Makeup Geek, and this is the shade Legend. This is one of the, I think this was the first foiled eyeshadow I ever bought from Makeup Geek. It's just such a beautiful, reflective, coppery penny color. It looks like a penny in the pan. I mean, this is obviously the most used shade in this entire palette. There's actually an entire divot through the middle. That's why there's that ring there. I love this shade, and it's been ages since I used it, so I figured I'd throw it in here to get back in love with him. Next, we have from Makeup Geek Dirty Martini, which is a staple olive green. I feel like if any shade to me screams fall, it's olive green and orange. The two shades together are just perfect to me. So I figured I'd throw in a neutral, neutral, a mid-toned olive green color for me to play with. The last shade here on the end is by ColourPop and it is the shade Get Out. I think it's a beautiful raspberry kind of color, perfect for fall. Again, there are certain colors that in my mind, they just make me think of fall, and that's another one of them besides the green and the orange. I think raspberry is a beautiful shade to be able to play with during the fall months. Ignore Atticus, he's now playing with my camera stand. Next, we start off the fourth row with Blazing from ABH. This is just a very warm, reddish toned brown perfect for outer corners, buffing in the crease, doing a cut crease with. This would be a great shade to have as your dark shade before the cut. And then we move on to Makeup Geek's Tan Lines. Again, another one from that fall collection that was released a few years ago. I am trying to get my hands. I'm planning to purchase the shades in this year's fall makeup launch because I feel like it's been a while since Makeup Geek has launched fall eyeshadows. So hopefully I'll be able to do a video on that soon for you guys. But this is just a really nice, slightly warmer toned brown, and I figured I needed a couple of those in here in different, with different aesthetics to them, for lack of a better word at the moment. That's kind of what I was going for. The next shade in here is also by Makeup Geek, and it is the shade Wild West. It's a little bit cooler tone than Tan Lines is, not by much, but just a little bit to differentiate between the two. Next, we have another ColourPop shadow in Going Steady, just a little bit of an even darker raspberry than Get Out is, and this has a little bit more purple thrown in there, just to balance it all out. The last one on the row is by Makeup Geek, and it is the shade Curfew. I remember when I got this ages and ages ago. It's just a perfect dark purple. But not super dark, because we've got an even darker one down here. But this is just one that still retains its very true purple. It's not too blackened purple. It's purple, and I love it. And now we are on to the last row. We start off with ColourPop's two-piece, a very vibrant, bright blue. I don't know, I wanted something a little bit different to throw in here that I could work with the yellows and oranges, and I went blue, we'll use blue. 
and I decided to grab this one to see how I could play with him a bit, maybe with the greens as well. Next we move on to Makeup Geek's Time Travel, which is kind of a very, very dark teal. It definitely looks more green against this blue, but it is a teal shade, as you can tell by the swatches above. It is just, I love that shade. I used to use it. This is actually my second one of Time Travel, I think. I used to use it all the time, buffed very lightly into my outer corner, and it was just perfect. Next, we move on to Makeup Geek Enchanted Forest, which is definitely more of a true green compared to Time Travel. As you can see, this has got a little bit of an olivey green undertone to it. Not too much, but enough that it differentiates it as a green as opposed to a teal. Next one in the row is ColourPop's Razzy, Razzy, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, R-A-Z-Y. And this is just a purplish brown. That's all I was going for, kind of a blackened purple brown down in the bottom, something to ground my eyeshadows with. And then finally, last but not least, ABH Hot Chocolate. One of my favorite shades in the, what was it called? Shoot. It was the last one that came out before they released Modern Renaissance. Um, I got rid of it ages ago. Self-made, was that, is that the palette I'm thinking of? Self-made palette from ABH. And this was the shade I loved the most in that palette. So when they came out with it in the single, I purchased it because I no longer had the self-made palette. But this is just a beautiful, rich, warm chocolate color. No better way to describe it, and I love it. Okay guys, so that is it for this. Like I said, please tell me down below if there are any colors or shades or any kind of a fall look that you guys are interested in seeing. Please tell me down below. I am working on some upcoming videos like my Colorful Eye series. Um, trying to figure out a good place to schedule in foundation frenzy for the drugstore version it'll probably only be 10 days this time just because new jobs has started at this point so i'm kind of i'm kind of all over the place and it's kind of screwing with me so i'll be doing a chatty get ready with me in the future in in the near future where i kind of tell you guys everything that's going down and i think by this point there should be one declutter video left if I've planned the schedule right, there should be one declutter video left. And I think it's my liquid lipsticks, so you guys should keep an eye out for that. Make sure you are subscribed, that way you guys don't miss anything. I mean, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at kobeauty58. You can follow me on Musical.ly, now known as TikTok, as babykato. And then actually, I did create an Instagram for Atticus. So if you guys really want to follow my little Addy cat, you can. He is on Instagram as Monsieur Atticus, M-O-N-S-I-E-U-R Atticus. I will have him linked down below next to my other ones as well. He's just recently started. So, and look at him. There he appears on cue. Okay guys, you know the drill. Subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy seeing the shadows that I rotate through my Z palette collection. If you guys are interested in any individual collections strictly like all my color pops, all my makeup geeks, I might do one of those just because these are never involved in my declutter videos. So I've been toying with the idea of doing that as well. Tell me down below if that sounds interesting. Getting to see all of the ColourPop shadows, Makeup Geek shadows. I don't own very many ABH. I have a few NYX. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>